So being such a great woman, having such a status, how was her relationship with her father, the Holy Prophet ﷺ, in terms of obviously at the beginning of the message of Islam, he went through a lot of grievances, a lot of problems, wars, people mocking him, etc. How did she deal with that growing up, obviously losing her mother at a young age also? Well, if he's talking about Ummu Abiha, as he mentioned so many mm -hmm. times, that she's the mother of her father, I don't think you can get an accolade as wonderful as that. But even more beautiful is for him to say that she's a part of me. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's not just, we're not talking just the physical part. This is the continuation of the Abrahamic light. Shi'i imamology and authority is not simply discussing Arabic personage. Some people try and think that Tashayu is this discussion of a group of Arabic personalities or a family. No. The mystical divine covenant where God wanted the light of Abraham to continue in the loins of particular chosen people. Allah said in the last of Adam wa Nuh wa Al Ibrahim. The family of Abraham were chosen, members of them, not those who perform volm. Mm. Rather those who were the very embodiment of justice and dignity and mercy and the manifestation of God's attributes on earth. When Rasulullah says, Fatima bad'atun minni, it's like when he says, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. It's not a physical thing. There is actually a continuation of the message the understanding of the Lord continues from Rasulullah to his daughter Fatima. The way to speak about the Lord continues from Rasulullah to his daughter Fatima. But when you're mentioning those early days, they're very difficult for Rasulullah. When she's born, he's in the middle of the most difficult, turbulent period of his life. And she has to witness unbelievable amounts of oppression against him. The famous ayah in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ara'ayta alladhi yanha abdan idha salla. Have you seen the one who disrespects our servant while he's in his prayer? Abu Jahl, as the viewers all know, Abu Jahl used to throw feces on the head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Who is it that used to clean that feces but Fatima? You find, for example, that when Umm Jamil, the wife of Abu Lahab, used to throw stones at Rasulullah, who would clean the injuries but Fatima? But I don't want Fatima to be known as great simply because she's the daughter of so-and-so or the wife of so-and-so or because she cleaned her dad's wounds and injuries. There are many girls who've had to see their fathers oppressed. There are many out there who have defended their parents when their parents have been oppressed. There are many out there whose fathers have said, oh, if it's not for that daughter of mine, I would be no one. Many have received similar accolades, say Jabbar. I can't sit here and say that Fatima al Zahra is amazing because of this, because you and I both have heard our dads mm -hmm have in one way or the other praised our own sisters like this. But there are other traditions which highlight to you who Fatima is in terms of her closeness to Allah, not whose daughter or whose wife mm -hmm. she is. There are many, when they begin their lectures, when they talk about the greatest woman in Islamic history, and that is Fatima Zahra, whenever they talk about her, they're like, Fatima Zahra is great because she's the wife of Imam Ali. Mm. Or do you know whose daughter she is? She's the daughter of Rasulullah. <laughs> yes, and that's great by default. That's not great because you've actually achieved anything. That's by default. You happen to be born in the right place at the, the right, right time. time. <laughs>